Never Stop Learning, week 247. We're gonna take a quick look at my embedded image trace workflow in Adobe Illustrator CC 2015. Now, a couple weeks back, we were looking at how to work with linked images. This time, I'm gonna show you how to deal with embedded images. I also wanna show you guys a different way to work with the image trace function so that you get the exact result you're looking for. All right, so I'm gonna bring in an image. I'm gonna hit Command-Shift-P on my keyboard. That's gonna bring up the place window. Over here, I could choose which image I'm gonna bring in. I'm gonna go with AG Managing Director.psd. So I'm gonna be bringing in a Photoshop document. Down at the bottom, you have this option to bring in a linked image, but I'm gonna leave this unchecked so that I bring it in embedded. All right, I'm gonna hit place and that's gonna load up my cursor. Here I'm gonna click and drag to define the size of my image and then release. All right, so this looks pretty good, but the image is kind of big. What I wanna do is actually delete a portion of this so that I'm just left with my subject, kind of like a portrait. All right, so native in Illustrator, there's no way to actually delete pixels. You'd actually have to create a mask. So I wanna get rid of these pixels. So I'm gonna use a plugin by Astute Graphics. It's called Rasterino. And the name of the tool is the Crop Image Tool. Back over here in the Tools panel where the Eraser Tool lives, I'm gonna click and hold, and I'm gonna find the Crop Image Tool. All right, so now I have the Crop Image Tool activated. I'm gonna grab this annotation, click and drag towards the right, and then release. All right, so what I'm doing here is the brighter area, those are the pixels we're gonna retain. This darker area, those are the pixels we're gonna crop away. Over here with this annotation, I'm gonna click on this checkbox and notice it's completely removed those pixels. I'm gonna switch over to a different tool and I'm gonna bring up outline mode by hitting Command Y, Control Y on a PC, and notice we have completely removed those pixels. It's not a mask. All right, back to preview mode. Now, when I'm looking at this image, I can see that uh, I need to kind of bring in some more detail over here for the sweatshirt or jumper, whatever you want to call it. All right, so I'm going to make a levels adjustment, and I could do that by, again, using another plugin. It's called Phantasm by Astute Graphics. So I'm going to bring this guy over towards the side and go into the object menu, find filters and Phantasm, and then go with levels. Because I'm applying this as a filter, it's gonna be a permanent adjustment. All right, I'm gonna click on levels and that's gonna bring up the histogram like you're used to working with in Photoshop. Now I've got too much black over here on my image. So down here towards the bottom, I'm gonna grab this black slider, slide it towards the right and release. All right, so notice we're removing some of that black from our image, all right? So a slight adjustment one more time. Now my output level is set to 27 and this looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna adjust my white point. So I'm gonna click and drag towards the left. All right, notice uh, we're starting to brighten things up over here. Click and drag one more time for another slight adjustment. Now I'm gonna start blowing out my highlights and that's fine because this is just gonna result in white area. So that's gonna work out good for me. I'm gonna grab the midtones, click and drag towards the left and release. All right, another slight adjustment, that looks good. Now what's going on is I'm actually losing some contrast though. So I wanna darken up some of these areas in here. So I'm gonna grab my black point, click and drag towards the right, and release. All right, so now what we've achieved here is more contrast and we brought back some information over here in the sweatshirt. All right, I'm gonna click OK. Now we've applied that as a permanent adjustment, but uh, this image looks pretty good for an image trace now. It doesn't look good as a pixel-based image because I'm blowing out my highlights, but it's gonna give me a better result once I run image trace. So over here at the top, I'm gonna click on image trace and it's gonna run the default image trace for me. I'm gonna resize this guy really quick. All right, that looks good. Over here on the right, I've got my image trace panel up. Now, if you don't see yours, while you have an image trace object selected, you're gonna find this icon over here at the top, image trace panel. Click on that to bring up the panel. But remember, if you're looking for any panel, you can find them in the window menu. Just scroll down, you're gonna find them in alphabetical order. And here's the image trace panel. All right, hit escape to get out of that. Back in this panel, I'm gonna leave the default preset. What I wanna change is the threshold. Here we have less and more. If I make an adjustment towards less, notice we're removing black. If I go for more, now we have more black. All right, so I'm gonna remove some of that. Now we have like just a little bit of detail in here. But back over here in this field, I'm gonna click in here once. Notice we have a value of 32. But when I hover my cursor, and then make a change using my scroll wheel, I can start making some adjustments happen. All right, so I like how this looks. What I'm gonna do is kind of like Goldilocks it. Once I go too far, 
All right, I'm gonna start bringing this back. What I'm looking at is the information here on the sleeve, and I'm also looking at this monitor over here. All right, I'm gonna use my up and down arrow keys to make slight adjustments. All right, so the down arrow key. All right, that looks pretty good. If I go too far, then I use the up arrow key. All right, this looks great. 61 threshold looks fantastic. Now, I am missing some information over here for the face, but we're gonna take care of that in a sec. All right, I'm gonna go into the advanced portion of the image trace panel. Down at the bottom, you're gonna find ignore white. This is a great feature. Click, once you get the little checkbox, you've turned this on. I'm gonna tuck away the advanced options. Now, ignore white, it's not gonna create new paths for this white area. It's only gonna create paths for this black area here. So this is gonna work out perfect for me. All right, now what I wanna do is copy this object. Command C, that's gonna copy it onto my clipboard. Control C on a PC. Over in the layers panel, I'm gonna lock this layer down. And down here at the bottom right, I'm gonna create a new layer. All right, notice this layer over here is targeted. I'm gonna hit Command F or Control F, and that's gonna paste in front. Now, it might not look like anything changed, but look, if I just reposition this, you can see that we have both of them right on top of each other. All right, so I'm gonna undo that change. And now we're gonna do something like how you would normally do in Photoshop. We're gonna create uh, the layer above to have the exact adjustment we want. All right, so back over here in the image trace panel, I'm gonna play around with threshold. Using my scroll wheel, I'm gonna introduce a higher value. This time, I'm gonna be looking at the face. All right, so what I wanna do is introduce some good information around the eyes. And all right, so now we're starting to get uh, the top of his head. And let's see if we can get that ear to pop in. All right, the eyes are looking good. And there's the ear. All right, so now I'm gonna use my up and down arrow keys. If I go up, uh, it's starting to kind of crunch things up. I don't like that, so let me back off on that. Um, I don't like how the ear looks. I wanna smooth out that ear. That looks pretty good. All right, so I got some good information over here on his left eye and some good information here for the ear. All right, so now I'm gonna jump into advanced. These paths here, I'm gonna go for a higher percentage value. And that's starting to smooth things out for me. But if I go too far, yeah, it's gonna start looking crunchy again. So somewhere around 80 is working out pretty good for me. That looks great. Actually, I got 75. That looks really good. I got some good information for the eyes and it kind of smooth things out here. Now noise, I'm gonna bring that down to one. All right, what that does is it introduces some more detail over here for the right eye and the face and the background. Obviously, all this stuff is subjective. Just play around with these sliders until you get the look you're going for. All right, I'm gonna tuck away the advanced options. Now we're missing the information for the sleeve and the monitor over here. So again, like in Photoshop, let's just start erasing the portions we don't need. Shout out to Hannah Messer. She's the first one that showed me this technique and I've been using it ever since. All right, so over here at the top, I'm gonna to expand this so that I have access to these anchor points and paths and I could start erasing the, the uh, objects that I don't need. Native tool in Illustrator is the eraser tool. Shift E to activate it. All right, so now I start erasing portions of it. Now, I can't really see my image very well because I could see the edges of my anchor points and paths. So I'm gonna hit Command H or Control H on a PC. That's gonna hide the edges. But notice over here at the top, it's showing us that we still have something selected. So I'm gonna click and drag right in here. Notice we can now see the detail in the sleeve that's on the layer below. All right, so I'm gonna start just removing portions of this over here for the arm. That's gonna work out great. Now let's work on the shoulder over here. I'm gonna get a little bit of a curve going. All right, this looks great. I like how the body looks, but I don't like how the monitor looks. So let's erase this monitor and bring in the one from below. All right, this looks great. And I just wanna smooth out this little portion right here. All right, obviously I could play around with that forever, but this looks fantastic. All right, so I'm really happy with how this came out and we were able to create this using multiple layers over in the layers panel. All right, now let's keep working with this. I'm gonna select my artwork. Now let's bring back those edges. I'm gonna hit Command H or Control H to bring back those edges. And back in the layers panel, I'm gonna unlock the bottom layer, but I wanna target all the information that's in that layer. So I'm gonna click on this little meatball here. And remember, it's still a live image trace, so we can make some changes in here. I'm gonna bring this guy back to how it was. That looks great. Now let's expand this. Now we have our anchor points and paths, but I wanna weld these guys together. So let's select both of these groups, go into the window menu, 
scroll down until you find Pathfinder. Click on that once to bring up the Pathfinder panel. And the option I want to go with is this first one over here, Unite. Clicking on that once is going to weld everybody together. Now everybody's moving at once. All right, I'm going to play around with another plugin. This one's going to be Vector Scribe. Over at the top in the window menu, scroll down to find Vector Scribe. And I'm going to go with the Path Scribe panel. Clicking on that once is going to bring up this panel. Now the cool thing about it is it's going to show me how many anchor points are in my object. Here it shows I have over a thousand anchor points. So over here in the tools panel, I'm going to find my path scribe tool, click and hold to bring up the smart remove brush. All right, now that I got this tool activated, I'm going to click and drag to brush away the unwanted anchor points. All right, so what it's doing is it's retaining the original shape, but just getting rid of all those anchor points you don't need. All right, notice over there in the path scribe panel, it shows that we have over a thousand anchor points. Once I release my mouse, Notice we brought that down to 622 anchor points. So we're, we were able to get rid of a couple hundred anchor points really quickly. All right, let me deselect my artwork so you get a better look at it. Actually, let's get rid of the entire user interface. There we go. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. All right, so you get a better look at it. Now, the purpose of this video was to give you guys different ways to work with the image trace function and giving you the exact result you're looking for. All right, if you don't have the Astute Graphics plugins, don't worry about it. You can do this with the native tools. Just remember to use the layers to help you out. Now, if you want to try out the Astute Graphics plugins, head over to astutegraphics.com and you could try them out for free for 14 days. And there you have it, folks. That's a quick look at my embedded image trace workflow in Adobe Illustrator CC 2015.